Welcome to the Trash Cats Trash Cast. I'm Richard. I'm Steven. And today we're going to yell at God. <laughs> yeah, this is going to be some edgy shit, that's for sure. Yeah, some, I, I, uh, I put the title of this one in the notes as Atheist Edgelords, because that's what it kind of feels like. <laughs> All right, one to ten. What's your level of anger towards <laughs> towards the Riz, the Risen One? <laughs> the Risen One. Um, and honestly, um, it, it, it ebbs and flows um like a fine wine but it's um i don't know right now it's probably about like a seven seven to eight so should i'm our- sure by the end of this i'll be a lot more upset <laughs> I'm, you're gonna hear me uh unravel as we go oh for sure i'm i'm kind of wondering so i feel like my biggest objections towards a god figure or faith are emotional and it it kind of sucks because i'm so emotionally inflamed that while I also logically feel like God or faith is unreasonable, it always sounds like my reasons are purely emotional. So I'm kind of curious which way we tend to go more today. Oh, I, I definitely lean into the, the logic. Well, I'll be the yin-yang and be the emotion. <laughs> cool. <laughs> How's your week been? It hasn't been too bad. Just flying by. I know yesterday I messaged you like, I can't believe it's already. Like, Tuesday again, it just, the time just goes so quick. Today I passed a kidney stone. Oh, shit. Yeah, so that was kind of fun. Um, it started and ended while I was at work. Did you keep it this time? I did not. I didn't <sighs> have a cup with me. What do you I, need a cup for when you have two <laughs> perfectly good hands? Yeah, just gotta sift through it. And <laughs> honestly, sometimes I've seen them before when they come out, but this time I didn't. It was pretty small. Damn. Um, it definitely wasn't my worst one by far. Uh, it's the first one I've had in a, a few months, this several months now. So I think I've been drinking a lot of water lately. I think there was just like residual shit in there, and I've just been flushing it out did it still hurt oh yeah definitely not nearly as bad as some of them but it it, it, i was like pacing at work and like kind of like there's a kind of wriggle dance that you have to do that really helps like move it through (laughs) and anyone that's had kidney stones knows exactly what i'm talking about that (laughs) kind of writhing but like you know, whether you're sitting or standing, you definitely you can't be comfortable just staying in one place. It doesn't work like that. That's interesting. It, it, they're really stones of doubt made from God. God sends them to the those <laughs> yeah. doubters. <laughs> that's uh, that's probably. I mean, you know, if if God is real, God is angry at me, and He's bestowed upon me kidney stones <laughs> to test my faith. That's the truth. It's but doing okay. Chill week. Yeah. Uh, otherwise, Busy I'm doing week. good. I did see a guy uh, on my way home also standing at, like, not at, but near a bus stop, but he was carrying a big wooden cross, <laughs> like probably a not not quite a meter high, um, but you know big enough and um, just and not like not like holding it in his hand, but like you know like towards the like with his hand relaxed, but like arm up. Not like straight up, but like, you know, just kind of up and to the side. And I I don't know if that's like a, a mission that he has bestowed upon himself to show the good word or what, but you, I... Uh, could it have been any like pro-life stuff? Um, it was a single guy by himself. He didn't have any other sign, just a... <laughs> Just a psycho. You know. Just a cross at a at a bus stop and it Just the average Christian, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I thought it was um pretty cool. I honestly there was a, a flash in my head after I passed him and I thought, man, I should go back and interview this guy. Oh, dude, imagine if you just yanked the cross from him <laughs> and ran away. Give me that shit. <laughs> Total melt. Crack it over my knee. <laughs> WWE style. Uh, <laughs> Challenge him to a table's ladders. <laughs> Do a um, give it the people's to drop it on the ground and give it the people's elbow. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that's been my week. How's your week been? Well, uh, right before we started, I made 
I've had like a half a meal today. So I went to make my my second meal and mm-hmm. I made a big ass bowl of oatmeal with peanut butter and uh I put it in the microwave. I was about to eat it and then I realized I made it my oatmeal with spoiled milk. Ooh. <laughs> so nice warm spoiled milk. So Yeah, boy, that's a smell. <laughs> I would say overall, my week's been pretty cool. <laughs> pretty cool <laughs> that kinda, stuff going on. That kind of summarizes it for you. Yeah, that's about where I'm at right now, man. I'm pretty over it. <laughs> that's that's fair. That makes sense. Just feeling super black pilled. It's it's a. Uh, I'm in a good mental state to talk about why God is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> that's fair. That's good. I'm glad your week sucked. This would make a good podcast. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Any honorable mentions? Uh, I do not. I got a, a couple, but I'm going to do them super quick, so we're going to run through these. First, I just want to thank Tishing Hache again. We sent- Hell yeah. We emailed him the podcast. Uh, it was It's number 69, The Ankle Breaker. Or 79. 79. Yeah, 79. Yeah, yeah. We, we emailed it to him. And he replied back and was just very kind and encouraging. And that was just super cool. Yeah. Lo- love that. That's still my favorite part of. Same. Not my favorite part of doing the podcast, but it's definitely it's a close second. Yeah. Yeah. That, uh, any the, the, I'd the, shoot it to you right away because it's so exciting. Yeah. Yeah. When, when any of the artists we talk about or the people that we're fans of are like, hey, I like, I like this. Thank you. Or, you know, it's like, hell yeah, they – they replied to our post. Maybe they maybe they listened, maybe they didn't, but Right. Yeah, but you know. either way, one of the OGs of weird, obscure performance art that inspired all of the modern performance artists listen to our dumbass podcast. Hell like, yeah. It was so cool. So special thanks to Dashing Hache. Podcast on him. We had a lot of fun. Check it out. Yeah. And then I want to thank Sacred Cuts Collage, my buddy on Instagram. Her art is always awesome. She gave us some very kind words this week as well. And then this artist, this all right, this is a godless artist if I've ever seen one. Hell yeah. And he, he's one of those guys, whether <laughs> whether you recognize the name or not, you've seen his work, whether you're a, a grass toucher, or terminally online, you have seen his art. This is Cal Kearns. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I love this dude. It's so dark. He's he's one of the classic uh, like internet meme artists, basically. But it's yeah. amazing art too. Yeah, it's it's really good art, and it's so much of it's like so satirical and funny and, and super good shit. Yeah, I love his figures where they're they're like mutant exaggerated where the exaggerated realness is what makes it i don't know just so good it's just so good there's um one in particular on his page it looks like a a dr seuss thing <laughs> um it says i it's just this monster looking elephant face on a man's body <laughs> And it says, I meant what I said, and I said what I meant. There is no light within these walls which bind me 100%. God. <laughs> it's so brutal. So it's so good. funny. <laughs> yeah, he's, I, I just think, you know, he's kind of underappreciated. He's got 400K followers on Instagram, but literally everyone in our generation has seen his work before. So yeah. give, give this man some goddamn love and appreciation. Cal Kearns on Instagram at C A L K E A R N. I, I do want to. Uh, sorry, I, I do want to read one of the comments on this picture. Um, <laughs> someone, someone wrote, "Horton hears a hate crime." <laughs> <laughs> That's excellent. I thought that was really good. <laughs> All right, and then last one. Does do you <laughs> do you recognize the name John Hinckley Jr.? <laughs> Um, actually, I, I didn't when I was reading it, but now that you said it, John Hinckley definitely sounds familiar to me. Yeah, dude. He's the guy that attempted to assassinate Ronald Reagan. He shot Ronald Reagan. Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say, all right, so he, 
he's a musician, and he also tried to kill the president. And he did one of those two things correctly. And I'm not going to say which. <laughs> but John Hinckley Jr. is an American man who attempted to assassinate U.S. President Ronald Reagan in Washington, D.C. on March 30th, 1981. This was two months after Reagan's first inauguration. He used a 22 caliber revolver. Hinckley wounded Reagan and police officer Thomas whatever and Secret Service agent Tim McCarthy. He's the reason the insanity defense really doesn't fly anymore. He, he was clearly mentally ill. He shot Reagan to impress, I forget her name, but a, a famous actress in the okay. movies. So he, he thought if he, <laughs> if he shot the president, she would be impressed and like, I guess, love him. And Sounds years like later, she, to me. <laughs> years later, she said, well, I was kind of impressed. <laughs> <laughs> so it does work. Yeah, exactly. And murder uh, <laughs> that's the best way to, uh, into a get, get to heart. know your crush. Yeah. Uh, he's supposedly mentally well. And I mean, I, I wish him the best. Like it, it is kind of fucked up, but he's he's a free man. He did his time in a psych facility with, um, you know, he got uh, not guilty by insanity, and he's a free man who does indie music about peace and love. And he he even runs his own record label, and he had a sold out national tour that was just canceled at the last minute due to public pressure on the venues. So like pressure to not host his concert. Yeah. Oh, that sucks. Yeah, like he had sold out venues across the U.S. This was like the last couple months, and then they they all one by one canceled due you, to pressure. You, you try to kill the president one time, one time, and it's all everyone everyone ever tries to talk about. <laughs> Dude, isn't it, he's like from another era? Like, imagine trying to. I, I'm not saying to do this, but imagine <laughs> like. In 1981, <laughs> you could try to kill the president with a 22 caliber Get revolver, with, and that's the other with a 22 though. I know. I mean, I guess it's easier to sneak, but yeah, a real sneaky kind of gun. <laughs> <laughs> but like that, them little bullets. <laughs> it's a different world today. Like that. Mm -hmm. It. I don't know. It's just wild to think he's he's a free man doing music. Like good for him. It's cool. Yeah. They, they do say for um. Like assassinations, twenty twos are great because the bullet bounces around in the skull. But you oh yeah, that doesn't have enough to get for, through. Yeah, but you can't like it's not like a good murder weapon. Like you know, yeah, if you're taking pop shots at through a crowd or some shit, it's not a yeah. You're not gonna do shit. I'm speaking like I have any kind of frame of reference on that. <laughs> well, that one time you shot me with the twenty two caliber, I was fine. Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> We we play test everything. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, he's out doing music, and uh, that's the honorable mentions. Uh, let's get into fuck God mode. Tax the churches and religious institutions. That's how you want to start this. You're coming, that's how I want to start. This. You're coming out hot. I think that's the. I think if there's anything to be said after this, it's whatever. But the number one thing I think. I think we could I – th I don't know. I think it's just – it's so wrong that there's – I mean, I get it. It's a – you know, whatever. It's a – you know, it's people gathering because they believe a thing. That's fine. But when you start getting money involved, you have to pay taxes. This is America. I, clear <laughs> I clearly agree. I guess what I'm wondering is – why do you feel – let me go back. I think – I agree, but I think most of the country agrees, right? Like people of a particular church may not want their religion to be taxed, but right. most people would want other institutions to be taxed. And I feel yeah. like if it was polled, at least it would it would be like 55 60% of people – would want all religious institutions taxed. You are pulling that number way out of your ass. I am, but but I think f 
I don't know, man. I, I'm basing it off of something I saw, but I, I can't remember what it was. But it's like of people believing in other people's religion. I feel like the majority of Americans want churches taxed. I feel like I saw that where it was just above 50%. I would love to try to put it on initiative 12 and put it to vote. Why? I guess what I'm wondering, though, why is that the a big one for you right out the gate? Well, Not that so I disagree. But. That's a big one for me right out the gate because I feel like that's something actionable. Practical. Yeah. Gotcha. I, I feel like a lot of the other feelings I have about – you know, um, religious tolerance and stuff like that. I feel like it's not actionable. At least I don't have an actionable solution for it. That's not authoritative and shitty. So if, if anything is to be taken, you know, if anything is to be done to bring some kind of Balance, I guess. Balance isn't the right word, but some kind of fairness to the, I don't know. I just, I think it's. It would kind of help relocate religious institutions to a more appropriate place in society, opposed right. to being such a. I don't you know, know, and they can still write off, they'll, they'll still be able to write off a ton of shit for charity and stuff like that. So it's not even like. Their entire, you know, net worth is going to be taxable. Devil's advocate, because I, yeah. I don't think they should, you know, I think they should pay higher taxes or not be allowed to exist. But devil's advocate, the argument would be they should not be taxed because they create more value than they they take in or re- require. Right. And that's and and that's where I say if they're doing, you know, projects, doing charity things that are you know uh, give to the community, if they're they're doing things like that for society, then they can tax those expenses. Okay. Or, sorry, they can they can write off those expenses. As yeah, like charitable donations. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Hmm. The fact that people give money to the church and then write can write that off as a charitable donation. See, I don't even understand charitable donations. I I think it's I get what the incentive is, but it seems like bad tax code to me. It's a tax fraud. It yeah, I mean, I I would be so curious to know what percent of charity is fraudulent on taxes, you know what I mean? Yeah. And even those a lot of them You know, they say like donating to even like whether it's different charities, different hospitals and stuff like that. Like St. Jude's is one that I've always been told, like, that's a good one. The money is allocated in a good way. But there's a lot of them that like money isn't like you really have to spend a lot of, you know, donate a lot of money for any of it to go, you any significant portion of it to go to the actual cause. And a lot of that's, you know, some of it's like they're paying, you know, labor for people. Like, because not every, you know, charitable organization can run just on, you know, volunteer work, right? Yeah, non nonprofits. Most nonprofits still have a CEO that gets a a competitive salary to a yeah. business CEO. Yeah, and I mean that's fair because that person, you know, is. I is don't think putting, it is, but I understand. Mm, I, I I get it. It's just having. Having that resource, having that person there means that there's always going to be that resource available. That person's going to stay there because they're getting paid for what they do. It's not like, okay, well, I'm going to do this for a couple weeks and then realize it's, I have to get, you know, I have to do something else for money or, you know, like there's. It just seems like when everything, all forms of charity, especially by religious institutions, like what form of charity exists that is purely altruistic? There's there's nothing. There's nothing except like giving a homeless man food, like a homeless right. person. Like outside of doing something like direct action, there's no form of. I don't know. It just it sucks. Uh, it's so cynical, but like it just feels like there's no way that any 
of these organizations are worth the fuck. Like I know there's the charity watchdogs or those different things where you can see how legit, what percentage, but it just feels like there's just so it's like the the rotten apple shit, like whether it's cops or whatever, like there's just so many scams that it's hard to know what to trust. Just one bad apple spoils the bunch. Spo- one bad church makes them all stinky. That's yep. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So you're going practical. That's very reason, logic, tax the, the religious institutions. Um, if we want to go extreme, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure we do. Yeah. <laughs> why? Why are they allowed to have religious institutions? <laughs> in the same, I feel like in the same way that a lot of a lot of old practices in our in our country especially but i mean around the world are um they're things of the past right it's like when people when people tout the constitution as like this is you know the this this is the greatest you know thing this is the the one the one ring that binds us this is the I don't know. This is the thing that th- it's set in stone, and it's like no, 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 no. That worked then. It's been it, not only has it been you know th- like three hundred years. It's it's w- what we are looking at is the substantial difference in what society was, you know, in the seventeen hundreds versus the eighteen hundreds, and then the difference between the eighteen hundreds versus the mid nineteen hundreds, and then. The look at the and it's like it's like it's a growing scale, but then when you get to the mid nineteen hundreds to today, it's like a gigantic leap of society culture is It's a deeply it, embedded tumor. It grows and changes so fast. So here's the part that I struggle with. When we have as a public, we have conversations or or debates about police reform, immigration, Mm -hmm. whatever, it always, whether the two parties or the the people arguing get down to it or not, it always, at the root of it all, is about religion, faith, belief, deeper questions that that inform the moral systems of the two parties. And by allowing, by by allowing religious tolerance, it has these down, downflow effects that affect right. every facet of our world. Yeah, and I, I I know you feel the same. I'm just kind of being argumentative. I feel right. I feel like we need a, a much higher degree of religious intolerance. Yeah, and the the issue is every way that I picture that f- 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 turns into like authoritarian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it turns into a, an issue, and it's I like know. it sucks. <laughs> so when I was when I was younger, I used to um, I used to hold a belief that certain people you should you should have to take an i like an IQ test or some kind of. Uh, Something that shows that you're not a com- complete idiot, or you know, something that if it's you're gonna, if you're gonna, well, not even just a vote, but if you have, you know, millions of followers that you know, like hang on, hang on the words that you say, and like a license you, to to information, yeah, yeah to, to be yeah. able to just say whatever fucking shit you want to, and then people take it seriously, and they take it as news, and they take it as like fact, and it's, and you know, the whole you know, gubernational news thing, you know, that's Fox has come out and said that like their entire setup is all opinion pieces. It's like all, you know, they've come out and said like, yeah, yeah, anyone that takes, you know, something that Tucker Carlson says as fact is, you know, they're crazy. You can't do that. It's, It's an opinion piece. And it's like, but people don't do that. Well, yeah. On the other side of their mouth, they're, you know, promoting themselves at, they were specifically talking about, Tucker, but on the other side of the mouth, whatever, it's made the look like very factual information. Right. You know, so it's... 
Dude, that's an interesting concept, though. That but, you know, like licensing for for information. Yeah, it couldn't I, work, but right, exactly. And it comes to a point where it's like, well, who who determines that? And then like, me? what? Yeah, <laughs> we all do. It, that right? Well, well, I mean, yes and no, but it's there are you know that is to say that people that don't, I don't know, just because. You know, you have a learning disability or something doesn't mean that you should be able to share a message with the world. It's if <laughs> oh, I, I I mean that in the most honest way. Like I don't mean I, I, it out of context. That's a really yeah, crazy. Yeah, that's sentence. a that's a good sound bite. Um, <laughs> no, but I mean, like anybody, when you have the access to it, you they. I also feel that you know, yeah, you should. It's a u- the internet's a utility now, right? It's not. That's that's it's a not, tricky. That's tricky. Yeah, I, I don't know. It's just it feels like it's part of our you know society. It's not just a place where you can you know go on CD chat rooms and play games online. It's it's a part. It's a place. You know, like going on social media is akin to you know going somewhere in public. Because you're, you know, posting either pictures to yourself or posting, you know, comments or you're, you're, you're sharing your thoughts and your views with the world. And it's, it's, I see it as akin to that. So anyways, that, that's, I, I recognize yeah. that that just, it doesn't work anyways. So, well, I, maybe to your point is that, well, I feel like as much as churches preach tolerance and acceptance that is very rarely the true outcome mm-hmm. I, and i f- i feel fire should be fought with fire as much as they preach tolerance and do the opposite we should <laughs> we should <laughs> preach intolerance and <laughs> and stick to it but i think to your point we can't make those like s- actual systems. It has to be something yeah. we each determine for ourselves, and we need right. more people to to make that decision. It, you know, it comes to like standardized testing shit, and it's like you just because you can't pass a standardized test doesn't mean you're an idiot. It's. <laughs> <laughs> The, the 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 point being that like it, it's it comes to the thing of like where do you draw the line so so where all right let's do this because this is yeah. more interesting where do you personally where are you personally willing to draw the line in the sand on accepting someone's faith so where to the point where it 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 makes me just okay with okay look they can believe whatever they want to and and it and I, I think that's fair. I think that everyone should be able to believe whatever you want to. My my problem exists when you also get to choose the reality in which I live in. And by that I mean sure. voting. Sure. So when when you So you're going back to practical matters space. Right. So like that's that's the the line that I I I, I, I Mentally, I feel is it's an injustice in my mind, and I feel like that's a strong word, but it feels so wrong that someone who chooses to live in a an alternate a reality of alternate facts than what is observable, than what's around us, than what we've already proven to be true, can have the power to make decisions that the rest of us have to live by. I, while I agree, I do think I kind of land on the flip side because I I tend to think of it as when there's such a high percentage of people, like being an atheist is one of the biggest minorities you can fit in. Right. Right. It, as as stupid as that sounds, and I don't say that to take away from anything, but there's right. by percentage, it's one of the 
more alienating groups to be in. Right. So when I, when our reality, our freedoms are affected by, by other people's faith, it tends to bother me a little bit less only because that's been my expectation. We're like that, mm-hmm. that is the world we live in is, is a, a, a world filled with illogical spiritual supernatural beliefs right competing supernatural it's not even just one church one religion it's everyone believes in their own idea and they think all the other people that believe in their god are wrong like it's it's really crazy yeah so it tends to bother me a little bit less when like an ant let's say an anti-abortion thing is passed it more bothers me I guess it bothers me all the same. But I think emotionally on a personal level, it bothers me more, right? So let's say mm-hmm. I, I have a friend who who believes in something I think is very foolish. Mm-hmm. I I can feel close to that person, but it the max cap on the relationship is going to be like 99%. You know what I mean? Right, right, where, right. Where it's it's something I cannot overcome. And it, even if I even if I still really care about that person, it 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 truly affects how I feel about them. Right. It sucks though. It it does, but it's but it should be that way. Yeah, it's one of those like I had I had an employee pretty sure I talked about it this on the podcast before, but I'm gonna say it anyways. I had an employee that went that was like raised, you know, Catholic and they, you know, stepped away from it, you know, when they were in their like teens or whatever, and they started like doing more more, you know, different spiritual stuff and like finding, you know, their answers elsewhere in the world and and then they um they suddenly went back to it and they didn't just go back to it they like looked back on the years that they had walked away from it and they were like that was sin th- yeah that exactly that was sin that was the the path of sin that i was on and like did a full 180 the devil had me by the penis for 3 <laughs> years <laughs> I gotta get back to praying to statues so, so and cloud men <laughs> but we would i would like talk to them because like they had mentioned it at work and like we a couple of us were like concerned about them because they they would um it just seems so sudden and it like there's it's felt weird and you know but we i would try to have conversations with them about it and i said you know at one point so like they were talking about the bible or something and i said like so do you take the bible word for word or is it like you know, a book of stories that have meanings and, you know, like suggestions on how to be a good, better person or whatever. And they, they said, well, I don't know. And from that moment on, I, I you're a fucking idiot. I stopped. I realized I can't take, I can't really trust their judgment on shit anymore. No, because they don't even know what they believe. I they don't know what they the believe. the fundamentalists. But but it's like I I don't because I feel like if you if you're sticking if you if you can look at this piece of you know sci-fi fantasy fan fiction that is the Bible and you I don't know if if you're able to look at that and be like this is this is legit and this absolutely happened and this is the way the world started and in completely you know th- shutting down all of the advancements in science of trying to of f- of actually finding answers to to a lot of these questions and saying like no 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 that's not real that's uh, you know that's god trying to test our faith or like whatever like whatever your your reason for not believing it is it's the fact that you can't see the rationale behind that tells me that you're you're point of view is questionable you you're not able to logic out you know uh basic shit right so 
and of course, you know, it's I'm not I'm their boss. Like I can't fire him. Like, yeah, exactly. I'm not gonna take like, the lawsuit. Fire him. <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna you know, I'm not gonna let that affect their work or you know, like affect anything like that. Like that's that was a, a big important thing to me at that let, point. Let their um, family go hungry. <laughs> <laughs> but they um you know, but it's still like, okay, well, you know, we can't I don't know, like luckily I wasn't in a position of asking my 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 staff for, you know, important advice or, you know, moral questions or whatever, but other than just for just the, the fun of talking shit when it was slow. Um but I, I you know, that started that started a new round of questioning in me of like where Wait, like you like you said earlier, where where do we draw the line, right? Like, what's the the amount that you can you can give to a person of yourself while while knowing that they have they have separated themselves at least mentally from the reality in which we live. Real quick to clarify, I definitely don't respect. The fundamentalist, <laughs> but but I okay. I appreciate their conviction more than someone who that's te- that's where I thought you were going to land on that when yeah. you said that I was thinking like Stephen just stands for people that stick to their guns yeah like that but but to your point they thought about it even if they're wrong like even if they're self deceived or they've been taught something that they don't understand. That if they hold to it, I can respect that more than someone who's flip floppy. I don't know if the Bible's actual or lit or whatever. Like, get the fuck out of here. Then you. So I I joke about this to my girlfriend all the time about how, like, if she's kind of being like a tepid or in the middle on something, I jokingly will say, you have to ground your moral axioms. <laughs> like, if someone hasn't thought out their their moral systems and why they believe what they believe, then I can't trust their opinion on anything. Yeah, true. Anything. Yeah. If you don't know why you believe in a book you say you believe, a church you say you believe, a politician, an idea, if you don't know why you believe that or why you believe in why something is right or wrong— you are useless to me. Yeah. You're you're untrustworthy and unrespectable. I can't embrace that person fully ever. Yeah. I can try also, and I, yes. And I, I feel like I can try to I enjoy the challenge of trying to convince people of things. So I, I'm willing to engage to some extent, but I can never fully connect to that person. And it's hard to it, it's hard to like bridge that gap when you don't fully respect the person. Yeah, Which sucks. All right, what about what about prayer? What about if you see someone praying? Where is your your level of uh, tolerance or respect at? I mean, it starts with an eye roll, but it's I don't know. It just seems foolish. I, I mean, like. If you if this is something perverted. If, if if this is something you believe in, then sure, go for it. It's not, you know, if it makes if it makes your food taste better, I get it. But, but all right, and I I kind of know where you land on this, so I'm I'm gonna be a little antagonistic because mm-hmm. I am gonna try to to push you more okay. more my way. As a general thing, if you're at uh, a family member's house or at a, a public thing and s- someone prays over, they say grace before their meal. Even the non-believers always kind of, you know, you do the nod and you gently respect their their moment of prayer, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that is terrible because <laughs> you are co-signing someone's mental illness we, we are saying hey you believe in something crazy and i am going to act like that is acceptable behavior and i am going to grant you 
I'm going to act like that's not a crazy thing that you just did. Yes. So I I will go. I I normally don't try to be like a total asshole, but I will not stop eating. I will not bow my head. I will. I will. Oh yeah, no. Don't do that. that. Even even if it's at someone else's, like if I was at your family's house and they they someone extended family member said grace, I'm I'm not going to try to like. I, I don't know. Draw any attention, right? Yeah, you're not going to cause a scene over it. But, but if you're... it's someone I don't know, I'm causing a scene. <laughs> <laughs> and when it's my own family, as soon I eat, and as soon as they finish, I say, "That was a great fucking prayer. Thank God that is over." Every. <laughs> <laughs> but and, but and publicly, they still, and they still invite you over for dinner. Yeah, they still feed me good. Good food made with God's love. That's made why it tastes God's so delicious. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's been keeping you alive this whole time. You rejected it, but they keep in- enforcing it back in all, you. All that prayer infused food, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Plus ten nutrition, but in in a public space, I I feel like uh someone's prayer, like if, whether they get out the prayer mat, the prayer beads, whatever, they should be shunned, blatantly disrespected. Ostracized. Ostracized. <laughs> with all the other ostriches. <laughs> Put them with the big birds. Uh, <laughs> the, the, especially the thing with the, the family thing around dinner. My, I have a few aunts that, you know, like to do that or, you know, and that, that was a thing yeah. last Thanksgiving. I, I made a bunch of food and took it down and there was definitely part of me that was expecting that to happen and it didn't yeah i was i was surprised a little bit by that but it was um it it was definitely a thought on my head of like i'm like i i want to of course i don't want to participate i'm trying not to be a dick to my you know my family right and i sure you know it's like ants and shit that i don't see all the time but at the same time, I know that my, you know, my my younger like family members, my niece and my nephew, are both, you know, came to me and said, like, I don't think I believe in God, and and I my main thing is to make sure that they know that like that's fine, and to, they're also going to be looking to you for guidance in those right. moments. So it's like you don't want to be a dick, but you also don't want to teach them to conform to something they've expressed that they don't believe in. Uh, the the fun I think a fun thing to do when you are in that situation though. You know, cuz you're not going to close your eyes, you're going to you know and put your head down as you look for other people that, you know, open their eyes or whatever and you just wave at them like, "Oh, I saw that." Yeah. I saw that shit. Oh yeah. I make saw it, you I saw you disrespecting joke. God. Mock the other people's and prayer. Call him out like, "Hey, hey, he opened his eyes." <laughs> You gotta start over, do it again. I think if pre-existing relationship, you just quietly eat. You know, don't make a scene. If it's someone you don't know, you should you should make jokes. Tell a knock knock joke right in the middle of the prayer. <laughs> <laughs> the thank you God for this wonderful bounty. Uh, knock knock. Who's there? <laughs> not um, your God. Not I don't your- see him anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> God what, didn't make this food. I spent the last two hours in the kitchen cooking up this Thanksgiving dinner. <laughs> I prayed God would kill an animal. And I did all this prep work. I bought this food with my own money. What about National Anthem? I think that's the biggest fucking joke. Do you, do you stand like a good citizen and put your hand <laughs> over your heart? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Dude, I haven't stood for the National Anthem <laughs> since eighth grade. And I... I I, anytime I'd be at a baseball, like not that I go to baseball games, but would yeah. be forced <laughs> sneaking into baseball games like a regular pit pocket, like a real ruffian. Yeah, no. But anytime you you know school trips, whatever, you get forced to go to that stupid shit. I'd be the only person in the entire stadium who's like, no, nope. yeah, I'm good. <laughs> and uh, dude, I think <laughs> I've been pretty close to having multiple fights or getting jumped by a bunch of drunk. <laughs> 40 year old man for not doing the national anthem in Cincinnati, Ohio. I really, you know, you're supposed to take your hat off. 
I'll put your I, hand over your heart. I put two hats on. You might as well just stick your hand out in front of you and say, uh, mine Fuhrer. <laughs> I put a 10 gallon hat on and then I put, then I put a second 10 gallon hat on. So I got 20 gallons. That way I'm a little closer to God. Looking like Doug Demodome over here. But for real, if you go to a public thing and you don't show respect for I I feel like it's starting to change, but it's still a 95% of people are looking at you like you fucking spit in their face. (laughs) If you're not full allegiance to the flag with them. Yeah. I bought it. It's crazy. uh, A few years ago, I bought a pair of um, swimming trunks with the American flag on them. And it's, it was completely out of irony, but I, you know, it's what I wear on, you know, for summer barbecues or, you know, for, uh, you know, 4th of July, whatever, because I think it's funny. And recently, the last couple of years, I've, I still have them, but I don't break them out because I'm afraid that people will, like, you ever seen someone wearing some American flag shit. And like, you don't know if it's ironically or not. Right. Is it America? Fuck. Yeah. Or is it America? Fuck. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> so it's, I, I don't make America great. I, again, America. I don't want people to think that it's unironically. That was another thing I did most, uh, for 4th of July's. I, I would at least, I would listen to, uh, the theme America or team America song at least once. <laughs> and the other one was, um, the episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia where Charlie oh, sings yeah. Rock Flag and Eagle. Rock Flag and Eagle. Yeah, it may have been a mistake titling our last episode. <laughs> <laughs> what? We lost half of our audience when we did the United States of Torture. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to have it again with Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> like these fucking liberals out here talking shit about Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> No, I think I think the or- people on our side are going to be like they these guys love Rush. these guys love Rush Rim- Limbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, these guys can't God. stop talking about Rush Limbaugh. It's two episodes in a row now. <laughs> <laughs> They're all over the map. I don't know what they believe. <laughs> uh, that's cool shit. I fucking hate uh, God, but I love <laughs> Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> The only good thing God ever did was give us Rush Limbaugh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God damn it. All right. Uh, I got one more and then I see you got one. What What about respecting a man of the cloth? <laughs> <laughs> you know, just a, a regular priest with a collar, you know? Uh, um, I, um, I have no, have no respect for that. Um, and if, if if you needed if I needed any more reason, um, I looked for uh, I looked to preachers and sneakers oh, as yeah, a, yeah. another thing of like I can't. There's no absolutely no reason to, to show respect to these. See, I no, no. love priests. <laughs> Do you now? Because if you're in public, you can bully the fuck out of them, and they can't do shit. <laughs> They, they they look so bad if they stand up to you. So you just gotta put them in their place a little bit and be extra mean. So, to so you you can, you can take their lunch. You, you, you love priests because they're the perfect victim. He's so <laughs> so what are you gonna do? So Turn dumb. the other cheek. <laughs> oh hey father, <laughs> what's you gonna do about it, Big Daddy? Yeah. Take their collar right out of their shirt. <laughs> just start calling every preacher you meet, Daddy. What's up, Big Daddy? <laughs> Prayer daddy. Prayer daddy. <laughs> Give me money, prayer daddy. <laughs> I know you got some money out of the collection tray this week. Come on. S- splash him with water. <laughs> yeah, priests suck. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking losers. <laughs> I told you, I, I, I really, there's a invasive thought that I had. I, I This is one, like, I wouldn't do it just because it's so futile and it doesn't mean anything but i just the the idea in my head of someone going up to going into a church and anointing their inverted cross on the in the in the holy water and then walking out yeah putting satanic coins and (laughs) satanic coins (laughs) what's a satanic coin 
<laughs> just a little coin with a little pentagram on it. <laughs> well, if you turn it upside, if you turn it the other way, it depends on what angle you're looking at it. Dun, dun, dun. I mean, it's all still secular, but... Yeah, sure, sure. I guess, it, I guess it, if Satanism, that still isn't secular. That still... You believe that the devil is real and he is the one true God, king. S- Satanism's a real problem. <laughs> Th- those jokers, they really threw a wrench in yeah. <laughs> These people out here <laughs> claiming that Satan's actually the one true God. Repping the devil's set, confusing everybody, making, now, making atheists look dumb. Now, yeah. that's one we have both, we're both on record as saying that, like, we most identify as atheists, but it's the the hubris of someone to say there's definitely nothing out there. There's definitely no higher and you know thing that you know like it's it's definitely not Christian God, but there's you know to say that there's nothing out there. There's no you know you know somewhat. That's, I use supernatural, but that's you know for lack of a better term um, that has the connotations of being ghosts and shit. But you know what I mean. Something that's beyond our technology and our grasp of reality. To say that there isn't for sure, that's – you can't say that. That's well, also a logical fallacy. I agree. But I will say I kind of have upgraded my argument on this. Okay. So I previously have agreed with you. And my my thought has been to any outsider – I will always be adamantly atheist. Mm. There's no chance of anything. Fuck you. Fuck your God. There is nothing. Mm. But if you're someone I trust that I can have an honest discussion, whatever, I I want to be fully honest to myself and to that person, and it would be impossible for me to know 100% that there isn't anything or or. Yeah, so it's you're proving a negative at that point, it's, right? I mean, it's the the whole argument for, you know, the the you even have this in the notes next year, but the argument for atheism, you, you can't prove a negative. That's not how proving things work. Right. I can say that there's, you know, a fucking monkey sitting outside the fucking window over here, and if that's that's not, you know, you can't prove me wrong. You can give me a bunch of reasons why it doesn't make any fucking sense for there to be a fucking monkey out my win- window right now, but a, a positive claim requires evidence, right? You never have to prove something doesn't exist. If someone p- wants to prove they believe an idea, they think something's true, uh, they claim something happened or exists, they have to prove it. The onus is always on the one who makes the claim. And so an old shitty book written by people who want to impress their kings is not evidence. Yeah, it's, it's it is a form of evidence, but it is no firsthand or scientific evidence relating it to a god figure. Right. It, it relates to men believing in a god figure, but it's still secondhand evidence that does not relate directly to God. But my my upgrade to the argument is something I've felt for a long time, but I didn't quite have the words for it. And in preparing for this episode, I feel like I've kind of advanced that argument. So we'll get that to it in a sec. It's a Nietzsche thing, but but it comes down to instinct, and mm-hmm. we'll expand on that in a moment. Let me uh, let me jump back for just a second. So we we had talked about the Satanism and shit like that, and I I, I have this fun idea. I think of the the Bible, and I it's, I feel like if I were to write fanfic of the Bible, it would go a little something like this. So in reality, Lucifer is God. L- Lucifer, or I should say, Lucifer created us, right? So Lucifer made us in his image and we're Real beautiful. Quick. Yeah. Are we, just for understanding, are we going to be talking about these characters as abstract ideas or as 
the as role... seen in the Bible. Okay, that's what I'm wondering. Okay, yeah, as as seen in the the good book, in the uh, traditional lore. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, this is this is non canonical, but based on <laughs> canonical. Uh, yeah, so gotcha. Lucifer uh, created us in his image and gave us all the tools we needed to you know be a uh, wonderful being he you know gave us this land and gave us the 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 animals and you know most of like the creation part of genesis that was that was lucifer right and then i don't know no 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 it wasn't i'm just i'm making this up this okay. this is my this is my fanfic say. okay this yeah. this part's my fanfic okay. um so then so everyone knows that you know the Lucifer was cast from heaven because he right. uh, sought to be more powerful than God, or at least on par with God. And uh, so I see it as be this happened differently. We we are hearing the the account from the victor, right? So like history history is told by the survivors, right? So I feel like. Lucifer gave us all of these tools and made us to be who we are. And like, we are, we are animal. We are man. We are a part of this earth. And that's, that's all it has to be. And you have your instincts and you have your wits and you have the ability to learn to, you know, grow crops for yourself and whatever. And then, uh, this, this, whoever, you know, we want to quote unquote God, you know, whoever that really is came up and, and, and somehow, Took the throne and, and cast, cast our, our original, uh, creator behind. And now he puts out this, you know, it reaches out to man and he's like, I want you to jot this down. I got rules. I got new rules. And it's, you, it's, it's basically because I want you to be, I want you to not be like you are. You are, you were made this way by the by the previous god but i'm telling you now this is this shit's gonna change you gotta be more like me and by more like me i'm gonna lie and i'm gonna say you have to be angelic and you have to be you know so contrary to your own nature you're losing me so basically what i'm saying is what kind of god would make you and then say okay well i made you like this but actually i want you to act like this i i, I made you with these instincts and these these animalistic um desires and carnal needs but I'm, i got you but you're not yeah. allowed to you're not allowed to you know act on them or you know even think about them for for too long like i would argue the answer to that is a cruel god and one of the things i know we wanted to talk a little bit about is is the problem of evil and i i think this is direct evidence god making us as men, as women, in in conflict with our own nature, is evidence of cruelty and is the nature of evil. Yeah, God, God is the devil. yeah, God is the devil. So, but I, I, I don't at all. I mean, it's still it'd be a theism to worship a the Lucifer, or whoever. I think it's a sure. a fun idea if you flip the whole script of the Bible and put it in the context of the characters uh, the, are the same. Yeah, the character that's or the the one that's you know ruling on high right now is or you know the one that people worship to is actually the bad one, and the one that everyone says is the bad one is actually the good one, and and you know. Maybe that's why bad things happen in the world because we have discarded the actual God, the good, the the real God, and they're making life suck for all of us. I forget. <laughs> I, I know it's very interesting. I, I forget what it is, but there is a religion that believes that we are in a purga purgative for purga. A pergnant state <laughs> of uh, penance because we have killed the, our, our savior. Oh. But I can't remember what that is from. But I, I yeah, very fascinating idea. Some of, a, some of the ones I do I do gotta say the audacity of some of the bullshit that people come up with <laughs> and actually like devote their lives to is wild to me. Like the Mormons. 
especially because yeah, it's so recent. Fucking buck wild to me. My golden pajamas. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Wow. That's that's one that I I don't. I don't know. It just doesn't. It's it's so it's 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 close enough to Scientology to me that it's like it's just so how how do you believe this how have you looked at even all of the ex- already existing options and you said nah that one's got to be right I I think of Scientology just like Dungeons and Dragons actually in the I sense mean, it, yeah where you create such a rich complicated textured world that it it can supersede someone's reality like there's all kinds of other you know cult abusive aspects that help get a person in that susceptible mind state but part of it is that there there is a sense of wonder and uh, just complexity that you can really get lost in and mm-hmm. and there's there's lots of interesting things where like with any religion elements that if used responsibly you can learn a lot about yourself and others from but scientology is even though i think of it as poor storytelling it is compared to most religions pretty exceptionally rich <laughs> Yeah, it's got the this whole lore behind it because it was written by a sci-fi author. Right. I I think we've mentioned this on here too a long long time ago, but I wish the series on Scientology with Leah Remini was more Oh, I know. What, it, I wish it I wish it wasn't so over dramatized. Like it's already it sucks. Like you have material. The, you don't need to turn it into Have you seen um uh, no, I'm with the 100%. Have you seen my Scientology movie? No. I have watched that at least 10 times. Okay. It's a documentary about a man making a documentary about Scientology and has, as he's making it, the Church of Scientology is like harassing him. And which, you know, they're very well known for yeah. uh, the nut busters or whatever the fuck. They are like, Drafting lawsuits, having him followed, implanting people in his life to spy on him. It's like pretty abusive, invasive, and he's making a documentary where he's, and they show the whole process of it. He's doing the research and then paying actors to recreate the roles. And instead of like the finished product being the recreation you know, like that cheesy little part in a documentary where actors are doing it. The mm-hmm. finished product is watching them try to recreate these moments and then how the actors feel afterwards, basically. Oh, wow. It's a really unique spin. And like as they're doing these shoots, people are showing up at their studios and following them home and shit like, you know, like. It, it's a good one. And yeah, they're really wild about that in a way that like, oh, yeah. I mean, I understand why if, you know, bad shit goes out, they could potentially lose money. Right. Like David Miscavige's wife has been miss- missing or captive for f- half a decade. She, yeah. I believe she recently made contact, but very wild stuff. So a- as you mentioned a minute ago, the, the onus for someone making – the argument, they they should always have to prove their point, right? Right, 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 right. So right. there really shouldn't have to be arguments for atheism. I feel like in school or, I don't know, in, in any religious setting, atheism is always framed as a religious belief in and of itself. Right, yeah. When that is the exact opposite. Yeah. It, it's the, the lack of a belief. Yeah. And it sucks because that changing of the framing changes who the onus of proof should land on. Yeah. It sucks. That's, I mean, that's actually – that's where the word secular even comes from is the, the – it was a word that existed already and I forget its original use and meaning. But um, it's basically a, a, of or you know something that is of a nature that is without – uh, uh, it's not like so much a religious bias, but it, without a 
spiritual meaning behind it. It's just like factual in, in, in nature. It's very logical in nature. Um, but and the first person to start using that word as we use it now did so because atheist has even in it was like 18 1850s or something already had the connotation of like there's a still a theism behind it there's still a right a belief system behind it and it's not it implies that burden of proof that shouldn't exist right exactly so nevertheless we w- we wanted to present some of not arguments against the existence of God, but the counter to the burden of proof. Yeah, the th- the things that when people, the things that atheists all you know often will say, like this is this is why, like I can't believe in God. Yeah, like if a religious person makes a claim of a positive proof, these would be excellent counters, mm-hmm. counterclaims. So yeah, these are primarily philosophical criticisms of God as viewed by the Abrahamics, the Judaisms, the Christianity, the Islams. So number one is evil. Because evil exists, God cannot be all-powerful, all-knowing, and loving, and good at the same time. That's That was the big one for me. I, th- I think it's the big one for most people, really. Non-believers. Yeah. Yeah, that that was a that's a big one for me. That was the one when I my nephew told me he he was thinks he didn't believe in God, and I told him I, I said, "Well, why?" That was the reason he gave, and I said, "That's that's a good good enough reason." Okay, th- this is gonna sound super cringe, right? Mm-hmm. This this is the typical "I lost my faith" argument, right? Mm-hmm. I, when I first started truly doubting God, my reasons were not logical at all. I I had to like later cope with my reactionary disbelief of God because initially for me, it was the, the really like, grinding feeling of being forsaken where over time i i grew to believe that no god that was worth a fuck would allow me to feel the way i do for this long right and i i think and not, not only is he allowing it he created you that way right and it sucks because it's such a it is such a childish view in a lot of ways but i think it's really honest and like raw and i had to had to kind of i i later had to learn how to like ground how i felt rationally because it was such a purely emotional thing for me initially I mean that makes sense. It was a uh, a part of your life for such a long time. Yeah, deep. It was betrayal. Th- the world as as you knew it, basically. I I you know I love my parents. I have a very good relationship, but there there's there's no way I I can be at peace and feel that I have forgiven, but there will always be something to the fact. That I, I will always feel betrayed by them, yeah. by by you know, by my childhood, by my church, whatever. Like I can forgive it, move on. I'm not I'm not stuck on that shit. But it does. It changes things too. Yeah, it changes who you become. The um. The the second one on here just kind of rolls from the first one, but it's pain, which is sure. you know like pain, disease, and natural disasters for those to exist. That you know God can't be all powerful and loving and good in the human sense of the word. And and I, that's, I mean you know natural disasters are 
it's exactly that, right? It's natural disaster. Even in like insurance stuff, they call it acts of God, right? <laughs> I know. It's like so he funny. he did that shit. He brought that shit here. You know, but he let he let uh fucking your favorite quarterback get that touchdown last week. So <laughs> I meanwhile Haiti is sinking and <laughs> Yeah. The the pain stuff it's the same thing. Even if if I could be rationally shown that God does in fact exist and I knew that was the truth. I still would choose not to believe in him because any God that functions the way he does is unacceptable to me. I I will spend eternity in hell rather than bend the knee. Mm-hmm. Never, never kneel. Never dirty your stars. Fuck God. <laughs> and fuck <laughs> other people's God too. <laughs> well put. I like that. <laughs> Never dirty your knees. That's uh, the, you know, the Russian, you know, those stupid scene kid stars? Yeah. Yeah. Those are based off the Russian prison tattoos of an eight pointed star or whatever, six pointed mm-hmm. star. And uh, the Russian prisoners would tattoo stars on their chest and on their knees because they oh, would never, yeah. they would yeah. never bow, never, never kneel, never dirty their stars. That's why I got my knees tattooed. <laughs> Injustice. Yeah. Destinies are not allocated on the basis of merit or equality. They are allocated either arbitrarily or on the principle of to him who has shall be given and from him who has not shall be taken, even that which he has. It follows that God cannot be all-powerful and all-knowing, and also just in a human sense of the word. Yeah. It's the, it's the, we talked about this a little while ago of the um, situational fact kind of thing of like, you can't, it's like, you don't, you don't have any control over certain things. Like you can't control that you were born in Cincinnati. Right. We, you know, you, you can't, you can't take that back. You had no. You know, choice in the matter. It just that's that's a, a circumstantial fact. When you know cer- certain things that you know, even when when you were a kid, like growing up, there's certain things that you were um, told that you you didn't have any basis to question it on. And I I you know some of you know the information that was fed to you. Because it was your main way of getting it was circumstantial fact. The idea of any of those things being the thing that defines your life in any way is wild. The, that your 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 like you said the the first line the destinies are not all allocated on the basis of merit or equality and it's I don't know it's. Not all animals are equal kind of shit. Yeah. Yeah, there's... It's a weird thing. I feel like it's a coming-of-age feeling when you accept that the world is not a just place. Right. It's like, uh, I'm sure your dad probably said the same thing, like, the world's not fair kind of shit. Like, it should be, but it's not. Right, yeah. No, there. I, that was um, that was a thing, you know, growing up, almost to the point where it was a joke... You know, I feel like I heard that in some places, you know, like it was used as a punchline of, a, you know, to the joke of someone's expense and like movies and stuff like that of like, like, that's not fair. It's like, well, the world's not fair. Yeah. And it's like, it's very true. Like just in hearing it is whatever. But like when you, when it, you realize it, when it dawns on you, just how unfair it can really be, how unfair life can really be, it's. It's a that's that moment is a loss of innocence though. Yeah. Like that's uh sad. Stealing stealing from a child kind of thing. That's one I um I I mean I am thankful for being born in a place in a time where I could become the person who I am and I'm I'm I was just telling uh my coworker today as I was passing my kidney stone um <laughs> that's something that I've been thankful for in the past that um that I've never had to go through, you know, 
period cramps and shit like that. That's just a something, <laughs> or, you know, because that's, you know, that I've had friends and coworkers that get them really fucking bad. And it's like, that's, that it can just fucking shut you down. And like, fuck, I never had to worry about shit like that. No, I'm with you. I just wasn't not expecting that. Yeah, I'm no, with you. that's it's a circumstantial fact, and it's something that like I don't. Well, it I sounds just like never it, had to re- deal with it. It worked out pretty just because you got kidney stones to balance. It yeah, out. to balance it out. Yeah. <laughs> when are you going to get some fucking kidney stones and pull your weight? Never. I've just got rotten teeth. Yeah, okay, that's fair. <laughs> <laughs> you have rotten teeth and a uh, and, and addiction, an addiction problem. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, that's fair. (laughs) How about um, the simplicity point here? Yeah, I think this is part of what I was getting to earlier, where I think uninformed, in a vacuum, without societal, communal influence, it is the natural thing to believe there is not a god opposed to that to there being one in the sense of it is simpler there's no reason someone would dream like actually dream up a god and it be what a church says it is you know Mm -hmm. it's simpler to assume one does not exist yeah occam's razor you know the the simplest thing is always the most likely and I, I, I like the way that this is stated that since God is invisible and the universe is no different than if he did not exist, it is simpler to assume that he does not exist. And that right. goes – I mean that's a long scientific the, – the logical thing. Like there's logical fallacies and like, well, true, you could you know, uh, um, say the, the earth is – maybe it's not – uh, um, a, a sphere. Maybe it's a big ovular. I mean, it kind of is more ovular, not more ovular than a spear, but it's not perfectly round. <laughs> Anyways, the, the point. The point is, it's it's maybe it's your your point is like, well, maybe it's it's maybe it's this instead. Maybe it's this instead, and like try to throw out more shit. And it's like that's you're colluding it. Like we have the resources that that tell us that this. You know, it's obviously if you have a you know extraordinary claims require extraordinary evidence. If you don't have the evidence, then it's not worth anything. But if you're going to start throwing more claims into the mix, you're just muddying it up. It's like um, one of I one of my favorite old atheist quotes when I used to get them on wallpapers for my computer uh, when I was cool. Um, <laughs> one of them was, um, "Why is it that one must?" Um, why isn't that why isn't it that one can't look at a, a garden, a beautiful garden full of flowers and butterflies and things without thinking that there's uh you know fairies living in it too? Like why does it have to why why can't it just be something why can't it just be what it is? Because gardens are boring. <laughs> <laughs> like why why do you have to poke the make it into something that it's not? Why do why do you have to make it into because we want more. We we want the mythos. We want we want to be special. We want to have purpose and we we want to be to be made and directed by someone. To mm. not feel lost. I feel like, like it, there's so much of the what's the phrase I want to use for this? So much of it's like a sensational sensationalization kind of thing where like, do you think it's because like we looked at all the beautiful things that we have in the world? And it's I know that uh, it's not enough. I mean, and so I think part of it was a lot of these things were, you know, a lot of these, you know, gods were made a long time ago. And we as a, as a species came together and said, well, we don't know how to explain this. We don't, A, yeah. we don't have the scientific method together yet, but B, we, we don't have the tools and the resources to understand how this works. So it's, it doesn't, it's not crazy at that point to say, well, it's might be something divine. It might be beyond our, it's beyond our understanding. So, 
But then when we do learn these things, it's like, okay, well, that's just that's just a plant. That's just it just grows because it you know it gets photosynthesis and water and it has the the cell cellular structure in it and like we understand how it works now and it's like not yeah it used to be uh, for practical reasons but it's these gods right. were made a long time ago not all of them obviously but <sighs> i guess they were well, made, i think it's, they were definitely a lot of them were made at least after we knew about plants but still there's a lot of even like epilepsy but it's still all it always required a story like as much as it yeah. it fit a practical reason it it makes your day a lot more meaningful if you believe, you know, the sun god is watching out for you or that, I don't know. I think it's, I think so much of it goes to like our need for patterns and narrative. And the world is not enough. Like, I don't know. I feel that way. James Bond movie. Dude, James Bond was right. The world is not enough. Right. Okay? <laughs> the world sucks. <laughs> the, the world could be the prettiest, un, most unpolluted, bountiful place, and most of us would still be unhappy. Now, I I won't rest tonight unless I correct you and say that actually in that film, uh, the villain of the film actually said, says the world is not enough. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Richard Dawkins had a pretty interesting way – to for a way to implant doubt, right? So right. we just covered some of the counter arguments to a god, but if you're having that conversation with a person and you want to try to bridge the gap or pull that person a little bit more your way or to a place of at least a mutual understanding, one of the things he he would say is that you get the other person to acknowledge that they are at least a little bit atheist. <laughs> yeah. And and it's such an excellent technique of bridge building because if that person is religious, they, they may believe in their God, but they still have to be athe- atheistic to every other religion. Right. So... I'd- just to say, like, I just believe in one less God than you do. Right. It's so, it's, that's so clutch, I think. Like, that's really a great way of doing it. Because right. it puts you at a much, it makes you much closer to them than farther apart. Right. Because we believe, if that person believes in a Christian God and I don't, we still believe in 99.999% of religions, right? Yeah. The, the, you know, neither of us believe in, you know, Zeus and, you know, all the Ra and all the, the, the old gods of the old religions, the ancient, you know, that Venus and Hades and shit. Like, we don't believe in all of those, but we... So it makes them, it makes them acknowledge their doubt to other people's belief. Mm-hmm. And with that, you can challenge their their own belief a little bit more too, because you don't have to. If someone says they believe in a god, that percentage is a hundred percent. A ninety nine percent belief it is not true belief in in religious standards. So all you have to do is chip away that that 1% and get them to acknowledge that they could be wrong. It's not that they are wrong. and it, it just has to be, if you can change a person's view from they are right about their religious beliefs to I believe I'm right, but I could be wrong, that is massive. Mm. That is massive change in thinking. And the people that, even if it's just the 1% of of willingness to accept other ideas are a much reasonable person to deal with. I think I'm going to start practicing ancient Sumerian religion. <laughs> I do not know much about it. I know nothing about it other than it's a polytheistic thing. Do, is it just, I, I don't understand how these, hist- I find the ancient religions 
so boring. Really? Like, I think they're so much cooler. Dude. They're, they're so much more fun. Oh, the stories God. and the lore and shit of them. It's and pointless. The, the, the creatures. It, and what the, a waste of knowledge, though. That's how I think of, like, people. Uh, I know you, like, Greece shit. Like, Roman. Yeah, you I, like mythology. I, I definitely, I romanticize the Greek religious shit Dude, in a way so dumb it's I, so dumb okay okay the vikings the, gr- the okay oh, north wow. norse mythology <laughs> fucks dude, dude north norse so mythology dumb. is cool as it's fuck it's so dumb it's is just it dumb? stupid Absolutely. stories but, old people said well yeah that's what all religion is steven i know but i can't i can't get remotely i can't even but, pretend but, to be remotely interested in any mythology I norse care about mythology has mythology. like frost giants and shit and a space cow that someone suckled the teat of exactly <laughs> cool <laughs> <laughs> fucking all right well i'm i'm i will die on the hill that norse mythology fucks i, I think it's fine people enjoy it i just i can't get interested i think I think, I don't know this to be certain, but I think Sumerian religion is where the idea of a jinn came from. And that's pretty cool. <laughs> you really, really big into genies these days? Though? No, I just, it's, it's, uh, you know, of the, um, mythical beasts and shit. It's, uh, I mean, they're considered to be like demons and shit too, but I think it's, it's one of my, my, I mean, don't act like you haven't done research in, into different demons of different cultures and religions. I feel like it has. I can't handle it, man. I, <laughs> I, I would have, like, loved this. I, I was super into it. I mean, I think it's it's fun. I just can't give, like, any brain percentage to it. I don't know why. I used to think it was super interesting, but now I just... It just makes me, like, mentally shut down. <laughs> I mean, I it's don't just, know. I feel like it's definitely – it's way more fun and impressive than – at least than um, Christianity. No, I agree. Well, I like a lot of Christianity. Oh, you're fucked. Stuff. But, but all right. Here, here's what happened is I was into like some fantasy stuff, some, some legion of demons and demonology shit. But then I did heroin. <laughs> and I, I can't, like, I can't think about imaginary or, or real history mythos of, like, other people's stuff because it just feels so disconnected from my life. It's not that I, I don't appreciate it. It's just it feels like I could fill up 99% of my brain with stuff that would never help or affect my life. Mm. It's like, yeah, even more unuseful than science. <laughs> <laughs> like what has science ever done for me? F- really? Fucking stuff at nerds. <laughs> I'm, I'm mostly joking. <laughs> fucking what, what's it called when you, uh, turn someone's backpack inside out? Oh, is that nuggeting? Nuggeting. Right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> All right, so here here's the quote from uh, from Nietzsche that I really like. I I'm a sucker for Nietzsche. He said, "I have not come to know atheism as a result of logical reasoning, and still less as an event in my life. In me, it is a matter of instinct, and that that is, I think, my upgraded argument to." The do you believe in God question. Mm-hmm. E- even to someone I feel close with, it there's a feeling of, while I, I acknowledge there's no way I can know, there is not. And I may say I know there is not to a stranger, but if it's someone I trust, I can acknowledge it's possible. But my true instinct tells me it is not. Yeah. That we are alone and lost. We die. We are born and we die alone. There's no God out there, and that's okay. Yeah, that's I I I can I can I can work with that. But it's interesting because I've never heard anyone 
Of course it would be nature. But I've right. never heard anyone else make the argument that instinct is valid. It's the same way people justify their belief in God with faith. It's just instinct. It's one of our oldest innate resources that we're, we're built with is, is your instinct. <clears throat> yeah, and trusting goes, your gut. goes back to the uh, being a fish in the fucking water, man. Yeah. Don't want to be the fish that gets the hook. Damn right. I, I wrote this. I don't know how unhinged this is about to be, but so the the instinct matter similar. All right, I think faith is very similar to the tooth fairy. Yeah, let's let's you know, let's put all that. Let's put the tiger on the fucking table and yell at it. Let's talk shit on the tooth fairy. Fuck the tooth fairy. Fuck the tooth fairy. All right, I've thought about it. More Twenty-five more. cents for a tooth. Go fuck yourself. I I know what I got. I know what it's worth. <laughs> the more I think about it, the more fucked up I think it is to lie to your kids about Santa. Yeah. First of all, yeah, it's yeah, fucked. Yeah. I can't, I don't understand. But God is like the tooth fairy. Children believe it because they are lied to. It is essentially a conspiracy. By everyone in their life that they trust, where they are pressured to believe in something, that is not true. But as the child gets older, the onus of that belief slowly shifts from the people around them to the child. The child, as time passes, is expected to rip the scales from their eyes. Right At some point, it is on the child to stop believing in something. Yeah. And and adults who survive, if they made it their whole life believing in the fucking tooth fairy, they made it their whole life believing in their church, their God, whatever, they still have that faith. They neither... They neither had the strength, or maybe it's just the reason, to doubt all the people... That lied to them. I, I I think I think it comes down to strength, and that's a very like egotistical way. I feel like to think about it, but it's, you're not think you're not when I mean you're not saying it takes a lot of strength. To, I think it to can. Question, I think to, I think it depends on where that belief is rooted, depending mm. on how many people lied to them, how hard, what their life was like. What what the damage of you know removing the scales from your eyes? How how much that light hurts when you exit the cave? Now, oh. devil's advocate, let me throw this at you. When what you if everything that you've been told, every everyone around you for your whole life is like, yeah, totally, tooth fairy is real. Everyone around you is doing that. You you don't experience any person that's like, what? No, the tooth fairy is not real. You don't you don't experience any person doing that. Then, like you said, it's the the people in the cave with the the, the fire or whatever. Like, the then that's allegory. then that's real. That's real to you. Um, I don't disagree. So, uh, and that's where I think what you're saying. You know, it comes in with the 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 mental strength to uh, question that. To search, well, well, how does that – that doesn't make any logical sense. How That doesn't – but if everyone around you is is on board with it, then you're – I mean, you're, you're Truman showing, you know, yourself. Truman showing yourself is uh, when you expose yourself on camera in front of a bunch of people for the rest of your life or for your life. Well, I think – like, I th- uh, I, I There's a joke in there somewhere. I but, think what happens as, as a person who used to believe – and crazy shit like a god. And I, <laughs> any honest person of faith I've ever talked to, you know, they talk about it, you know, in, in, the, in the writings, in the churches, whatever. Like, doubt is a natural thing. They're, you know, they come up with all these ways for you to find resolve in those dark moments where you question your faith. And even if you're in that cave and everyone is in on that lie, you're, you know, there's no opposing points of view. Like if you had a, a isolated island 
where you had your your church, your cult, and you had the strictest of rules, and you never once heard about another religion. You never even heard of the idea that your God wasn't the truth. With a little bit of time, one of those people would would eventually lose their faith. Mm -hmm. It's inevitable because of Because of the thing, it doesn't matter that they didn't know anything else. They felt the doubt. And that comes in, like those cracks form with the, those counter arguments, whether it's the, the simple answer, the, uh, the problem of evil, the injustice, the pain, there's always going to be those reasons why people lose their faith too. Mm -hmm. But it's, the more of a closed circuit system it is like that, the harder it is. Because I agree when it when your whole reality is one truth, it, it's it gets pretty close to there being to to it being all there is. Yeah. Like I I don't I don't think I I would guess. Until until I was 14, 15, maybe 14. Until I was 14, I didn't know what sex was. Didn't know what drugs were till that same time. I had never met anyone of a different religion, like knowingly. I think maybe like a couple uh, kids that converted to Christianity, I forget they had their own name, but they were like the outcasts and maybe like, one or two uh, non-practicing Christian kids. I, I'd never, I don't think I personally met anyone that wasn't white till high school. Like, it was a pretty fucking closed circuit system. Yeah. I never learned about any other religious ideas in any real form of seriousness. If the ideas were presented at all, it was that these people were dumb and wrong. Yeah. So, makes it a lot. So like the only... The only cracks that can form are like the pain and injustice, those type of things. Stuff that you you internalized and and kind of right, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where it gets tricky. Do you want to do what's his name? Epi? Epicurus. Yeah, yeah. You, you want to do Epicurus, then we'll do problem of evil and bounce. Yeah, sounds good. So this is another one of the quotes that I I really like a lot. It's so good. <laughs> it's really good. It's really well well stated, and it's old as fuck. Epicurus is an ancient Greek philosopher, as well as founder of the school of philosophy called Epicureanism. Uh, only a few fragments and letters of Epicurus's 300 written works still remain. One of his famous quotes is, Is God willing to prevent evil, but not able? Then he is not omnipotent. Is he able, but not willing? Then he is malevolent. Is he both able and willing? Then whence cometh evil? Is he neither able nor willing? Then why call him God? Dude, that's so... It's so simple. It's it's so... It's such simple... Such simple and and effective rhetoric. I mean, it's... But, you know, but as as you've heard a thousand times, and it's going to get worn out until you die... God works in mysterious ways. God. And it's not it's not for simple simple minded folk like ourselves to to understand. <laughs> he he word. he gave us all the tools and the resources just not the ability to understand. Dude, I I so strongly wish I could change people's thinking. Not that's, everyone's thinking, but people I cared about. That's so one when I go into conversations with religious people at this point, I always approach it from a standpoint of realizing that nothing that they say is going to affect, affect, yeah, affect the way that I think. So I shouldn't go into the argument. I shouldn't go into it thinking that I'm going to change their thinking. Now the difference is, why? No, no. Well, that's that's where I'm getting. So the difference is, I have 
things that are backed in logic and backed in reason. It's so, so it's like when you're teaching someone, someone says anything that's wrong and you say, oh, no, actually it's this or you, you correct someone on anything. They they don't really have any reason to believe you other than if either that sounds right or if you pull something up and show it to them or, you know, like to to prove someone wrong. I mean, that's when you, when you're getting someone to change their, especially their, their outlook on life, their worldview, that's still falls under the, you know, substantial claims require, you know, uh, substantial evidence and the, once again, the, the, the onus isn't on the, the person that doesn't believe in God, but that still, when you're in the conversation with someone about religion, I still don't, I, I think it's, it's fair to, you know, state your, your points, but it's, it's unfair to yourself to expect them to hear what you're saying and say, oh, you're right. Because you're just gonna make you're you're gonna make yourself angry and you're gonna you mean like it's it's great That's if true. you can but I'm just saying it's an injustice to yourself to go in with the idea that I want to change their mind so, and like and maybe you do but 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 it's not never, an injustice on yourself it is them doing an injustice to you. Mm, I don't think so. What I what I mean by that is more that. You are setting the yourself up. Yeah, you're setting yourself up it. for disappointment. That's more I, what I meant. I I understand, and I I agree with going into it that way. But I I think I think they hold much more responsibility than they are ever willing to accept ownership of. Right. It sucks because when you're in that conversation. It it's not a philosophical debate. The the onus like the you have to state your points as if you have to prove it the same way. And also, anyone you know to to admit you're wrong about something is one thing. To admit that your entire worldview is wrong based on a conversation you have with somebody, yeah, it's one thing if like you have a conversation with somebody and then they go home and like you have start to s- thinking about it. You plant the seed. You know? Yeah, it's just sowing the seeds of doubt. Yeah. You can't ever get them to change their mind on the spot. That would be absurd. And like it's their con- their con- their conviction wasn't there from the get. If you get them to like, oh, you know what? That sounds right. I don't know what the fuck I've been thinking. Then they weren't they weren't fucking in it from the get. <laughs> yeah, it's all about spread and fud, <laughs> fear, uncertainty, and doubt. <laughs> That's what that they say in the, the that- cr- markets. Like stock shit. That's what um, that's what Elmer Elmer Fudd's name actually Sp- meant. Spread and Fudd. <laughs> no, but here here's what I think makes it extra difficult. Even if I think of like the modern religious person, most people are not fanatics or fundamentalists. Most people, such as my family members or the average West Side Catholic right? Mm -hmm. They are not true believers. Like they, they believe in their faith, maybe unquestioningly, but they don't truly believe. Like if you bring up a conversation about God, it is not the most important thing in their life. Right, right, right. They disagree with the church on a lot of things. Most Catholics disagree with birth control things, such as like the pill or whatever, contraception. Like, it is more of a cultural position that informs bad decisions than it is a grounded moral belief system with fundamental hardcore beliefs mm-hmm. that they feel are true. Like that, my parents would embrace everything the church tells them to, but if I argued that any of those points are are bad for X Y Z reason? They might agree, like, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, yeah. That's what bothers me so much with with these conversations with people because they are that that type of faith where they're 
they're like, oh, God's the most important person in my life, but I don't even want to talk about about it with you. Like, I, I don't, I don't need to, you know, explain anything or, mm-hmm. yeah. I, I just vote this way because God told me. But I don't, I don't, you don't, we don't need to talk about it. Yeah, and it's like you are so weak and spineless. Then, like, you don't, you don't go to church once a week. Like any of that shit. It's just like a. Just something I believe from a cultural point of view. It's like because so weak. because my parents did and their parents did before them, and it's just what we do. That we, to me is the most God. disgusting version. Yeah. Despicable. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's get the fuck out of here. Daffy, La- Daffy Duck was definitely an atheist. He oh, was at least an atheist, probably. You know, I was gonna say a nihilist, but that's not true. He's probably an anarchist. He also had a bad heroin problem. <laughs> <laughs> that's why he always slurred his words. There was Daffy. a there, there there was a few years when Daffy kind of disappeared. He kind of fell off the map for a while, and that's why he's locked up. He he's they back. Got a- he got him. He's back, but you know, it's not really the same. Yeah, he's just not the same he's, man he used to be. Yeah. <laughs> All right, la- last thing: the problem with evil. We're gonna do it quick. Simply put, the problem of evil is the question of how to reconcile the existence of evil and suffering with an omnipotent, omnibenevolent, and omniscient God. It's a hell of a fucking sentence. It is. Well done. (sighs) Paradoxes such as the problem of evil clearly show us that the concept of God is contradictory in and of itself and therefore is impossible. Religious people will say that God is outside of space and time and doesn't have to follow the natural laws of reality, so he can deny logic. The only problem with that is logic is not a natural law of space and time. It's a law of reasoning that applies to concepts, and that's why the problem of evil remains a common source of doubt for religious people. Logic can't be pushed to the side. Religious people have to explain why God is in contradiction with his own attributes. Because he is either impotent, malevolent, apathetic to the suffering of his creatures, which is evil, or he doesn't exist. Applying Occam's Razum. <laughs> <laughs> Occam's Razum. <laughs> Occam's fucking raisins. God damn it. <laughs> Applying oh, God damn. Occam's Razor. It would, <laughs> it would be reasonable trash to cats, say... Trash Cats brought to you by Occam's Raisins. <laughs> God doesn't exist. That's what Occam's Raisins says. <laughs> Let's get the fuck out of here. <laughs> it's just a box of... It looks like the sun-made raisins box, but it's just a, it's just a guy like shrugging. And it's like God isn't real. <laughs> it's underneath it. <laughs> Here's some raisins. <laughs> Some dried grapes. <laughs> God's dead. <laughs> Here you go. <laughs> uh, oh fuck! Want to take that last sentence one more again? I think it's funny if we leave it. <laughs> <laughs> it's such a serious tone. It's a little less. <laughs> oh, that's a good way. Why not? Fuck them. Occam's raisins. <laughs> Just thanks again for listening, everybody. <laughs> Oh, Thank you to Approaching Human for the use of his music. You can find his work on SoundCloud at Approaching-Human. Thanks, John. Uh, sure we're, to- we're doing a music video. John's finally doing an album, and we're he's um, – I don't know if we're going to use my art or not, but we're he's, I'm going to help do some art direction on a music video for him. So oh, fuck yeah. Cool. Yeah. Make sure to check out the show page at Trash Cats Trash Cast on Instagram for news and arts from the show. Also check out Facebook for the memes. For the memes, they've been extra trashy. Uh, you can check out my trash yard on Instagram at Skyzix, S-K-Y-Z-A-C-X. Finally got that uh, new piece up I liked. And I'm yeah, gonna man. Keep Warlocks. talking about it because I haven't done anything else new since. <laughs> but I'm working on it. Got something new started at least. So uh, I think that's it. Shouts out to our honorable mentions. Once again, thank you to Shane and Shay. So fucking cool. Really, really do appreciate that. Shouts out Sacred Cuts Collage. Check out her art on Instagram. Check out uh, Cal Kearns. And uh, check out John Hinckley if you're a fan of uh, 
president shooters. Yeah, we might as well check out uh, John Wilkes Booth. And, um, <laughs> um, and you know what? Everyone go to church this week and steal that fucking prayer basket. Just take the money and run. Take the money and run. Hell yeah. It's going to be all for us today. Stay classy. Eat trashy. Go fast, eat trash. <laughs>